Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Beyond Sunday. And what an episode we have today. We have a couple of my good friends sitting across the table from us, all six feet apart because we are still socially distancing. And again, uh, I am excited. Uh, Robert, Roy. Check, check, check. one. <laughs> check. Welcome, buddy. <laughs> Just got to make sure the mic is working, you know? Yeah. Hey, You're hey, You're going to hey. do that. You have to get backstory. And oh, we have true. Alexis uh, Leon here. Welcome, guys. Welcome to Beyond Sunday Podcast. Yeah, it's good to be here. It's finally. awesome to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, finally, you guys get to be on the different side of things. So uh, for those of you who don't know who uh, RJ and Alexis are, they are the brains behind the operation here at Vox Church. So what do I mean by that? Well, the production, one of the biggest things that Vox Church offers is a uh, different campus structure. So they we stream from one location and we send it out to all different locations. I mean, not only Connecticut, but we have Massachusetts and we're growing right now, but these guys are the brains behind that. So, you know, we just want to say, number one, great work, guys. You're doing an awesome, awesome job. Like, let that be the first. And, <laughs> oh, and thanks, formal. Kurt. Yeah, yeah, you know, I got I to gotta give you a little, yeah. a little something, something before we dive into everything. Yeah. It's because you're on the production team. Yeah, much. Hey, I mean, I <laughs> I may be on that team led by you guys. So um, let's briefly describe the roles that you guys do. I guess, RJ, we'll start with you. Let's, uh, so you are the central production lead for all campuses, correct? Yeah, I'm actually the central production lead for all the campuses except for New Haven. Except for New Haven. Uh, yeah, and so I oversee just any uh, equipment that get installed in our permanent locations or like if we roll out a new a new campus, uh, I'm in charge of like purchasing the equipment and making sure stuff is ready for the volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I oversee the volunteer teams too at the same time. And so, uh, you know, I'm kind of in contact with all the production leads and building just like helping them build their teams and yeah. uh, getting people involved and creating the culture out there. So mm -hmm. I, that's, I mean, we'll get to that in a second, but Alexis, if you want to just, so he's all the other campuses, you're the main location, you're New Haven, which is the host location. So, um, besides any streaming issues, everything kind of, <laughs> and the buck stops with you when it comes to, you know, getting all the information out. So describe a little bit about your role and let's just go over a typical day at New Haven. What is it like? Yeah. So we load into college street, probably around, we get there around six 30. Um, we start setting up. Uh, cameras, lighting, audio. So since we're the broadcast location, we have to have everything set up so we can live stream out to six other. Yeah. Six, seven. Where are we now? Yeah. We're yeah, growing. I, yeah. So <laughs> I just want to interrupt you real quick. We're, you talk about loading in and loading out. I don't think a lot of people realize that, you know, College Street isn't our location. We actually have to build the set every single week and we have to tear it down every single yeah. I mean, and this all happens in the course of the Sunday. We have our morning services that mm -hmm. which um, start at 8 a.m. And then uh, we have our night service at 6 30. Yeah. Morning services start at nine. Oh, nine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, go, I, go to, yeah. I go to the later. Don't push those up. Don't push yeah, them up. Well, to give a frame of reference too about um, what load in takes. So if you think about like a concert or a music festival, they come in at 8 a.m. for a 7 p.m. show. So we come in at 6.30 to go live at 9 a.m. Yeah. So we are setting up an entire set in really about two hours. Mm -hmm. And I would give us an hour and a half because the ne the last 30 minutes, we're getting everything, making sure doors are open, you yeah. know, and all of that stuff. So that's kind of, you know, it's unheard of. We don't, it's not normal for us to execute the caliber of broadcast that we execute um, in that in that amount of time, of time. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it's it's incredible i mean i first i get to see it firsthand which is really cool so you know everything comes in i'm talking lights i'm talking mm -hmm. instruments every single thing even you know our broadcasting station it's not like college street mega offers case. yeah mega yeah. case it's not like college street offers all this stuff i mean we're bringing in all the equipment we're setting it up as quick as possible let's talk about the teams that you guys have in place how like how does this function you know how do you guys make this happen volunteers you so, shout out shout out yeah, to volunteers. yeah. <laughs> Kurt, over here <laughs> yeah i'm just saying for all like i mean you have some people who are awesome that volunteer mm -hmm. and you know to watch these guys and they do it with you know and they do it with the kindness and you know the love of just a volunteer they just want to be a part mm -hmm. of what it is that that you know vox is doing and i see it in every single person's eyes they just they want to be there it's exciting for them 
Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I think RJ is probably one of the best team builders I know. I think that's a huge thing. Like we get volunteers and people who want to be there, but then from there we kind of have to lay the foundation and build this team. I think when we both came in, there wasn't much of a production team. And um, we definitely, RJ was about a year before I was and kind of built it from the ground. So the team that we have now and the depth that we have now, like we, it was all trial and error. Like we've had to build that ourselves. Yeah, yeah it's definitely been a lot of like, you know, uh, contacting people and just putting people in play, you mm -hmm. know, uh, I mean, you've get, you get a whole bunch of people that walk in and say, you know, I've never touched a lighting council before. Uh, and you've got to create those systems to be able to like tailor to that so that a general person can hop on the team immediately and feel a part of it and feel like they're giving to it, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and I, I felt like, you know, we were able to do that within the first like six months of just kind of taking over the team and everything. And then once we did that, I mean, we're still learning. We're still, we're still building the team. Yeah. Uh, so any of you guys in New Haven that are listening, yeah. uh, shameless plug, we need more people. We hey. do. Uh, it's not know. as intimidating but, as it sounds, I promise. We yeah. always throw that out there. It's actually a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, honestly, that's how I got started. I got started, I had a, a background in video, but let's just talk about the pieces of the puzzle, um, the different sides of production. When you check that box that you want to volunteer, let's talk about what it is that you might be able to do. Because again, there's people that ha are very artistic. They have a good idea, you know, maybe some sound engineers out there or maybe some people who understand lighting. So what are some of the jobs that, you know, we have at New Haven or even at other campuses that they could possibly do? Yeah, I mean, you've got anything from, uh, you know, an audio engineer to a lighting tech to just the person who's running the slides. Uh, and and they're not the person who's running the slides isn't just doing it in the room. They're actually running the slides for the, what's going out to all the campuses, yeah. too, at the same time. So that's out of New Haven. Um, that's and that's out of New Haven. Haven. Yeah. yeah. And then and then you've got your video team, too, which Lex really heads on. Um, and that's kind of like her. Each each person kind of has their own discipline that they've kind of grown up in. And that's mm -hmm. kind of Lex's. Uh, uh, discipline and she's really taken off with that and brought us to a whole new level as far as video wise um, and uh, and so like there's all these different mediums that people can plug into and so they check the box for production and you may start off shadowing in like audio or or whatever and then feel like this is really isn't the fit for me mm -hmm. well it might not be the fit for you like in audio but there may be a fit for you in lighting or in video you yeah. know so there's so there's it production encompasses so many other smaller segments um that people can get involved yeah. with and yeah. you know eventually we actually have people that we we like to call like our gold stars i guess you could say mm -hmm. that come on and they'll learn one they'll they'll learn one thing really good but then they want to learn all, everything else yeah and we're able to take those guys and like plug them into different places and, and everything mm -hmm. else so it's 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 a continual uh team that you continually learn you know just this this is discipline mm -hmm. yeah. so I, I'm not gonna lie I was I'm a New Haven guy I went to New Haven I saw everything live and everything kind of you know that's that's how I liked it and that but that's all I knew so the first time I went to the campus I was a little weary about what the experience is what was going to be like because I was so used to seeing you know Justin live I was so used to seeing you know the big production the band I, I mean everything so the first campus I actually walked into was New Haven it was my first time away from New uh, oh, wait, I'm sorry um, North Campus it was my first time away from New Haven and I was shocked. I was shocked with the the quality of you know, everything. And that was, I think, the biggest thing that was my reluctance to actually go to another campus because I was like, oh, you know, I mean, it's not going to get any better than life. I actually liked it better. You get a close up view, you know, you see more. And I really enjoyed my experience. Um, uh, yeah, yeah like ahead. well, yeah. <laughs> our goal, I think, and this is something I think RJ and I agree on, and it's kind of like one of our visions in the church is to be one campus and multiple or one church in multiple locations. Yeah. And so we really take to heart the idea of like how do we make those campuses feel like it's not New Haven, it's not Middletown, Stanford, you know, all these different locations, but we are one church. Yeah. 
And we found that like with, we're able to do that with video Mm -hmm. and how, you know, we're constantly changing. Like, how do we make it feel more personal? You know, how do we change the shot? How do we change the lighting? How do we make it more? So even if you're at a campus and you're not at New Haven, that you still feel like you are part of the Vox family. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think I can say that for all campuses. I've been to multiple since, um, since the North campus, my first time there. And I bet in every campus that I go to, I get the exact same vibe. And I think it starts even with the volunteer. I, I mean, I keep on going back to the volunteers, but from the moment I get to the parking lot, you know, it's a, it's a welcomeness. It's a, you know, an openness that everyone has. So I get out of my car from the parking lot. I walk into, into church and it's the same feel. And I think, you know, that says so much about the culture of Vox is that it's not just here. It's not just there, but every single, I mean, they're all unique. They all have their own personality, but with the culture is there and it's just incredible to see. So going into campuses and RJ, maybe this might be a question directed to you. What does it take to open up a campus? I, if you're looking at the in, the entirety of, and it doesn't necessarily need, need to be monetary, but you know, what is it like opening up a campus from from scratch? Because you, I mean, microphones, you need the projector, you need the screen, you need you need all that. What what is that like? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of equipment that's involved. I mean, we have a base level package that we've kind of put together just over the years, and a lot of our minds just kind of looking at that list and just really coming along with one base level package that when we, um, you know, when we look at a venue to launch a new campus in, we go, okay, so, you know, this is everything that I need in order to launch, you know, a new venue. But let's say if we're, if we're going into a venue and they have, let's say they have speakers like, um, like Hartford loads into infinity hall and they have already got their sound system already there. So Mm -hmm. Hartford doesn't actually own a sound system. They use, you know, the venue sound system. Uh, and so, you know, every campus is like different, I guess, when you're going to launch. Uh, and so, but I've got a, like a master spreadsheet that tells me like these, this is all the equipment that I actually need in order to launch a campus. If we were to just load into a, let's say a blank box, yeah. you know, we've had, you know, Springfield for some time, uh, loaded into a, um, a, uh, conference room in a hotel, you know, yeah. uh, and Lex was part of that campus <laughs> up there too. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I like to say that that's where we kind of trained her how to offload and load a truck. Basically. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, you know, and then, so we have a base level package that we know what we need to purchase in order to do that type of venue, uh, yeah. and then scaling it, scaling it down from there. Uh, and then like when it comes to volunteers, you're really looking at the fact of, what campus are you launching out of? Yeah. So every campus that we launch launches out of, let's say, a mother campus. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it, it has a campus, another campus that's close by, uh, that is that is you know, just supplying just the effort to launch the campus. And yep. so most of the time, we'll go to the people in that campus that are already on that production team and say, "Hey, can you promise with us, or can you commit for us three months of just volunteering, yeah. uh, just to get this campus off the ground?" Uh, and then we go back and and say, you know, after three months, our goal is to have already have that campus kind of fulfilling those positions themselves, yeah. you know, and uh, bringing in new people as new people begin to to come in. So, and, and Justin's mentioned it a couple times. I think he I, in the monetary number to opening up a, a location. I mean, he said it on stage. He's he said it before. I think. I mean, it's close to two hundred thousand, isn't it? Yeah. Just to open up one facility with all the equipment that that you need, and you know, I think it's important. That's not just production equipment, though. That's oh, yeah, like, that's everything. That's everything. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and and I think it's important for our listeners to to understand that is you know, it's not like we're, we're trying, I mean, we want that, we want that culture to go into the new campus and we want that effort to go into the new campus. So, you know, it's not, we're not going to, you know, kind of do it halfway. We want to go, we want to make sure that it is the culture of Vox. Yeah. And there's, there's definitely a delicate balance there too, because, you know, I'm constantly trying, we are constantly trying to get that number down Yeah. because the more we can get it down, the more campuses we can launch. Mm -hmm. Right. And the, the ultimate goal is to reach new England. And so to do that, we're going to have to launch a lot more campuses, you know? And so how, how can we balance that tension between, you know, putting out a great production effort and putting out like a great, uh, look and a great sound that people aren't distracted. People, you know, people are able to kind of just enjoy service and not get distracted by anything. Um, while also not spending 
for the big council yeah, or spend, yeah, yeah. spending for the big speakers or mm-hmm. spending, you know. Um, and so there, there's a there's definitely a delicate balance there uh, that keeps us in check, too, uh, because, you know, we everybody wants to play with the fun new toys, yeah. you know, <laughs> <sure>. um, <laughs> and and there's got to be a check there where it's kind of like, you know, it's OK not to play with the fun new toys as long as we're able to launch another campus because yeah. that's the main goal exactly people yeah. so let's switch gears a little bit and let's talk about some of the events that we've done here at vox and you know i've been a part of a couple where i'm just in awe of first of all how did we get this done that's number one and number Christmas. two i don't, I don't I mean, how did we get that done you know and and it's just it's a really cool to be a part of the creative side of things like hey guys this is what we're going to do for the set list this is this is what we're going to do for the set design and you just building it from scratch so briefly alexis you know talk to me about one of your favorite events and kind of just a little bit about what it took to get that off the ground yeah um i think oh man I, I think special events in general is probably some of like the most fun because it's this like opportunity for us to pull people from different campuses, mm-hmm. people who are kind of our leads, um, who are always volunteering, you know, and we get to do this these events um, and we're in the trenches together. Yeah. And some of my best friendships have come out of doing these events, you know, we Oh, we always get closer. We always come out. With, there's just this camaraderie of coming together and working these really long hour days to get this event up and running. Um, honestly, this past Christmas, it was my first Christmas. Insane. To it get was together. In, it was insane. We make this joke that we planned it in a week. <laughs> I don't know how we pulled it off. I don't know I mean, how we pulled it for off. Those of you who, <laughs> for those of you who don't know what Vox Christmas is like, it's, you know, every year it's over the top. It's so awesome. Mm-hmm. And it's such a cool experience to be a part of. This year we yeah. did three, am I right? Three? Yeah. Or four, four, four. Four different, well, three different venues. Three different venues. Four different, four different times. Yeah. 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 To kind yep. of break it down too. We did, so we did. A, we decided to do a tour this year, mm-hmm. you know, and we had the LED Let's wall go. for the, <laughs> <laughs> um, we did Bridgeport Friday, we did Hartford Saturday. Hartford, we ended up, um, it was a late loadout and we ended up getting back to New Haven, probably close to midnight and we were up um, pretty early Sunday morning it's like for New Haven, 4.30, we yeah. were at College um, Street. Yeah. And it was two. It and two, it was two, yeah. and, and we yeah. had Sunday morning, so we had two services Sunday oh, morning, yeah, and then man. we had two Christmas services. Insane. I think by the end, like, and, and it's so fun because it, you know, in the moment we're just like, this is exhausting. Yeah. But now we talk about it and we laugh because that really did bring us really close together. And there was this moment at the end when it like all finished, we all ran together and just shouted and we were laughing and everyone was hugging and high-fiving because we have no idea how we did it. And it was, and we got so much great feedback from it. Praise the Lord, man. And I think one of the coolest pictures that I've seen is right before, I think our first service at New Haven, there was a bunch of people all gathered right in. That was worship, live worship recording. That was my favorite. Yeah, I'm sorry. We've done so many cool (laughs) events that. I'd say that was my favorite. Oh man, that, I mean, just, the live worship recording. So we're going to tra- uh, transition from Christmas, which is awesome. Can't wait. To, can't wait for this one. <laughs> I'm a big Christmas guy. Um, into the live worship recording. Yeah, so f- now, now you know, it's not just broadcasting. Now we're we're we have cameras. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how many cameras yeah. were we, we had running six. that day? Six. That cameras. was the first time we have ever done something like that before. Even like live recording audio. Mm-hmm. It was all like. Again, that's another thing. I don't know. We planned in a week. Like it was. (laughs) And and the thing is, is that people look at these events and they're like, oh man, they've got all the best equipment and they've got everything. And to be honest with you, like the stuff we were working with was just regular uh, yeah. mm-hmm. budgetary stuff. Yeah, you know, well, it uh, goes to show the the kind of value that we have in in the people that yeah, are, that absolutely. are working at Vi. I mean, yeah. and again, I'm just gonna pat everyone on the shoulder because the product that is coming out is spectacular. And yeah. obviously, there's going to be better equipment. Obviously, there's going to be you know better microphones and better everything. But you know. I'm not going to lie, we're crushing the game, you know, <laughs> with, with what we have. I mean, so kudos to you guys because you're the backbone behind the production as, as a whole. Yeah. Um, so again, we can come back to this in a second, but I want to talk about the transition, transition during COVID-19, the coronavirus and the whole thing, because again, this just put a wrench in every single person's plans. We went from you know, New Haven to now filming everything out of our home location uh, at Middletown. So 
this changed everything for you guys. And oh, not yeah. only not only just this the services, but we've added Wednesday night, we've added Saturday morning, we've added things like that. Uh, so so talk to me a little bit about the transition from being at New Haven to you know Middletown and and just going online. Yeah, I mean, I've been telling people, uh, you know, the first couple of weeks during quarantine, uh, you know, my wife started working from home and I was still working out of Middletown just trying to get us up and running. Like yeah. me, yeah. Lex, a whole bunch of whole bunch of production guys were just here just trying to get the set set and uh, lighting looking good and everything else. Um, and uh, it would, probably wasn't until like two or three weeks after we were supposed to be in quarantine that yeah. I actually like started working from home. Uh, but that transition was like, Oh man, I look back on it now and I'm like, it was literally within a weekend. Within a weekend. Yeah. Within I, I a remember, weekend. I remember Lex texting me, be like, hey, you know, we, the governor's going to shut down in two days. We're filming, we're filming like five different things tomorrow. I was yeah. like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. We had to drop everything and go team. Dropped everything. Yeah. yeah. We, and again, just the Lord's hand was on that because we had been talking about his front lighting and we pulled like a late night the night before and we we're mm -hmm. like, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's just stay late and then we can have the whole weekend and we'll come in on Sunday. <laughs> and then that Friday, we were actually all at, you know, we were all at the gym picking up equipment yep. and um, we got the call and all of us just like beelined to Middletown yeah, from the parking was lot. Yep. That was it. We, we were came like, in, we cranked up the lighting truss and we were yeah, ready to go. In, it was insane because no one knew anything. It was like, are we going to close? Is it going to be martial law? Yeah. You know, are we going <laughs> to yeah. be able to have church at all? Can yeah. we leave the house? It was so unknown and you guys put together the entire set in, you know, however long it took you. And again, you know, we still have the quality as if we were back in New Haven. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just, that's incredible. Well, there was not only that transition, but a lot of people don't realize that we actually were not streaming online. We were a streaming campus. We would stream to campuses, but yeah. we were not streaming yeah. on, on social media platforms. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and, and it's different. It was it's new a to different, us. yeah. It, it was completely different. And a yeah. shout out to Living as One uh, because their their program, like it was literally a phone call. Me and Lex sat down for one day, uh, mm -hmm. for not even a day, for like a half hour, and called Living as One. It was like, listen, we need to be able to do this. And they just like they hooked us up, and we were immediately able to stream online. Yeah. Uh, and it was a completely different transition for us because now we we were focusing on like. When do we go live to Facebook Live? When do yeah, we go live yeah. to you know YouTube? How, how does this delay? look? Yeah, mm -hmm. what's the delay look like for yeah. all this? You know, uh, so that that was definitely a big transition in all this too. Yeah, and not just that. I think just the way we filmed. It yeah. was like we're used to being in a room with the cameras way in the back. Yeah. Um, Justin's preaching to 500 people and, you know, he's not looking at a camera. This was different. We're in an empty room mm -hmm. and the angles were different, you know, like it's, we can't have that sharp angle anymore, you know? And he has, you know, he's looking at the camera. So it was all just trial and error of like, okay, this is yeah. normal for us. How do we do this? Yeah, we literally took our Middletown like auditorium and changed it into a black box. And then <laughs> changed it into just <laughs> into, a studio. Yeah, exactly. I can't wait till Ryan Weatherhead comes back. <laughs> he's like, what? Oh, he, <laughs> he's already told me, he's like, I've seen it. <laughs> he's like, I've I'm in there it. on Mondays. <laughs> Put, it Put it back right now. <laughs> Um, so let's talk about some of the growing pains that you guys have occurred. Uh, we'll, we'll get to normal in normal sure. circumstances in a little bit, but just the online thing, you know, Facebook, uh, is, has there been a time where you guys have just, you know, been like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's probably, you know, when we made the switch to, to film in Middletown, that yeah. was probably every hour yeah. we were look, we were saying that to yeah. each other. Like, we almost had church at 7 a.m. on like a Tuesday. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember, I remember that. I, I yeah. woke up extra early and all of a sudden I saw a notification. It's like, Box Church is live. I'm like, oh, this is off <laughs> text from Carrot being like, um, is this supposed to happen? Nobody, nobody tell JK. I don't know yeah. if he knows. I know. That it Keep actually it happened <laughs> that was so, so. funny but oh, yeah man. just just little things like that but again you know it happens with with anything it's brand new we didn't have yeah. time to prepare or anything and it's just you have to walk through it and sometimes you know you yeah. have a roadblock and it's okay yeah i mean to be honest with you everybody was going through it you know and uh we were just grateful and thankful that like you know we are a streaming church already and yeah. so like as far as setting up cameras and having the equipment mm -hmm. um you know we were we were great there and our learning curve was there was still a learning curve and it was still sharp for us but it wasn't as sharp as it could have been yeah uh and so you know 
it yeah we were just and there were there were small little things like like lex mentioned the front lighting uh you know there were there were other things where like we were supposed to like um preview to youtube live before yeah. we went live on it and i didn't realize it but someone like 10 years ago had did it on our on our church account and so that's how we were able to immediately go to YouTube yeah. Live. Oh, wow. Um, uh, if not, you so, have to wait like 24 yeah. to 48 hours to get approved. Wow. But someone just randomly for like two minutes. Just did live. it randomly. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. The and so, grace of God right there. Yeah. Exactly. So there, there were a lot of things that we just like, we looked back on and we were like, man. Like, like God this, was in this. This was yeah. definitely God. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. So e- e- filming filming here, there's been a couple instances where I've been like, oh, man. It's so it just... I'm part of the film crew and I do some of that. And one time I was, he gets on screen. Every he, once yeah, yeah, he I gets get on, caught on camera, yeah. <laughs> but I was, I was walking on stage and I think I was filming Joey or something like that. And all of a sudden JK went up for an altar call. And so I'm like, let me get off stage, this and that. So I'm walking all the way over. All of a sudden I look back and I see my cord is caught on Joey's guitar. <laughs> so I'm moving. And then all of a sudden you hear, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> I look up it was and I, the best. I almost just cried. And I was oh. like, I really hope uh, no one heard that clearly. Everybody heard Everybody it. Everybody heard it. In the auditorium. <laughs> yeah. So, so do you guys have any instances that you look back, you can laugh about now, but during the time you were you were freaking out. Oh yeah, there was a here we were getting his front lighting good. Uh and for all of those all you guys who don't really know to have good video, it relies on lighting, it relies on the front lighting. And so, you know, one of the the lights was just uh the shutters were closed or something like that. And so me and uh, Justin Beardsley, <laughs> shout out to Beardsley, man. Um, we we went and grabbed the ladder, and it was a ten foot ladder. I have never heard a ladder that needed so much WD forty <laughs> in my life. Now, mind you, JK's he's teaching. Just live. This is live. <laughs> yeah, he's teaching, and I'm yeah. over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As he, so I'm literally like, I hear it the first time. So I walk the ladder over to a corner that's a far away from the stage, open it up and then walk it over. Uh, so that was, that was a fun, fun one. Yeah. I think a lot of my fun ones just happen like as I'm directing. Um, so just a little like to explain what that is, is I'm on a headset usually with Kurt yep. and <laughs> the rest of the camera team <laughs> and I'm directing what shots I want and you know the positions and telling them where to go and um, there's was this one time and we make fun of him so much I make fun of him so much um, one of our camera guys Miguel, yeah, let's go, Miguel. <laughs> he's gonna listen to this and be like hey I got another shout, got out. Another shout yeah. out he was um, on the drums and Steffi T started talking and something we like to do is like make sure whoever's talking is on camera and she's on the other side of the stage <laughs> on keys the drums are all the way on the left and Steph is <laughs> all, all the way, the way on, on the right, right. <laughs> and I said somebody, <laughs> I can't even tell the story somebody gets Steffi T and Miguel goes I got this and pans live oh. From the drums, the whole stage, all the way to <laughs> the, whole the stage. entire stage, oh. and I'm I'm pretty sure I was yelling. I was like, "Miguel, you're live!" Oh, and he's like, man. "I got this." Yeah, yeah. that's so funny. <laughs> but oh. it's things like that that usually happen the most that are just they're so funny now that we talk about yeah, them. Yeah, there's they're in the moment. I mean, even <laughs> even before this, like in College Street, just yeah. thinking of things that where you're like you're just like freaking out that like something needs to come off stage or something needs to get fixed. Oh and then, gosh. like after the service, you think about it and you just laugh. Yeah, you're yeah. just like, when, when does do, that right? ever happen? I, yeah, exactly. There is, I think, during "Wake My Heart," they he had the big sticky board. Yep. Which RJ oh. made, by the way, yeah. with his hands. He <laughs> yeah. made the frame for it. Oh. Um. So I had gotten people. I had asked people to, you know, when he says this cue, can you take it out? Yep. Um, and he says the cue and it doesn't come out. <laughs> and so then he's like live on stage and on live stream. And he's like, so I think my production people and Zoo and I are Beardsley and I run down oh, just the geez. aisle and we're, and he's like, and there they are. They're running. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure he started that little horse song too. That dun, 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 no, he, he did um, all yeah. live <laughs> as oh. we're like sprinting down the aisle to yeah. get the board out. There's just, there's just so many cool stories like that. 
Yeah, they're. Re- I mean, the behind the scenes is is awesome because yeah. again, it's a lot of people don't get to see the yeah. ins and outs of production of you know even the worship team when they practice things like that. They don't get to see all that. Yeah. They get to see the final product, which is amazing. Uh, but you know, the family and the community and the culture behind the product is that's what makes this place so yeah, special. Yeah, I I wouldn't trade most of the guys and girls that we work with here. Yeah like as volunteers, you know, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I mean, Lex talked about being put kind of through the crucible during Christmas, just as far as like a long weekend. And we love those weekends. We live for those weekends. Mm -hmm. Like that's like, that's go time for us. That's, that's, we put as much prep into it as, as possible. But like, you know, you get that team together, that core team, that like, that like team that will ride with you to the very end, you know? Uh, and you just become like, friends yeah. you know and yeah. and it's great because like as we're growing as a church mm-hmm. you know and and launching these multiple locations we get to make new friends yeah you know like when we go up north we have certain people that we call upon because we've just worked with them so long and yeah. so it's kind of cool that like we travel to campuses we're not i mean yeah we're kind of based out of new haven but we get to travel to campuses and like have friends in springfield and have spent yeah, friends in true. stamford you know yeah. uh and eventually worcester and new mm-hmm. britain you know uh and so it's the team is really what makes it fun uh, and and to be honest with you like we're only two people yeah. you know and we, we've yeah. got we've got a couple other people that are really like on board with yeah, us yeah. right that are we we count as like our core team you know <laughs> uh but um you know there there's definitely like that aspect of just having all those other people come together and yeah. just create that cool just that cool camaraderie yeah you know so for for those people that are listening that maybe want to be a part of you know the production team what's the best way for them to get involved uh best way probably is to check the box yeah. on the card okay or uh, you can email us or you can email us or just <laughs> hey, walk i up. have a special talent <laughs> just, yeah <laughs> listen every team is looking for somebody I know. Yeah. so just walk up to the booth and be like listen i want to get involved and who knows you might actually end up mixing sound that day i know you know you can I mean? ask for alexis if you're in new haven ask pretty much for rj yeah <laughs> yeah anybody any of the campus leads you know um there's there's a lot of openings and a lot of yeah. you know uh and it's definitely behind the scenes yeah you know yeah. it's definitely like you know you have to wear black you've got to wear black like mm-hmm. which is which <laughs> kind of helps with my wardrobe yeah. <laughs> it like, does not i like it, colors yeah. i'm always like i have to wear the same thing gotta every be, sunday gotta see <laughs> i enjoy not wearing the yeah. same not wearing different things every sunday because mm-hmm. i don't gotta think about it That's i so just funny. throw on the same black hoodie i mean i i trust me Production was my number two. Worship team was number one. Joey yeah. just he just oh, keeps dodging me. Is, he, he dodges me in the hallways like nah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know, again, what it's such a fun crew to be a part of because you know it is behind the scenes, but you get to see the ins and outs. So for yeah. those of you that are listening that want to be a part of this team, I highly, highly recommend this. Even if you just want to learn, it's just a cool environment to learn and to experience new things that you weren't able to do before. So guys, I just want to say thank. Thank you so much for being a part of our podcast. It's really fun. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah no, no. It's, yeah. it's fun to learn the ins and outs. And again, you know, you guys do an amazing job. And I'm sure everyone that's listening to this is clapping right now saying, you know, keep up the good work. So we love you guys. And uh, for uh, all of thanks, our listeners. Kurt. Yeah. We love you too. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so for all of our listeners out there, guys, if you want to get involved, go ahead. But we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>